Marlin is an open source firmware for many, many 3D printers, such as the Ender 3s sitting behind me. However, how do you go about modifying it? If you add a BL Touch to one of your printers, you need to modify the firmware so that it understands that there's now a BL Touch available and maybe you want to au enable auto bed leveling. So you're gonna to need to modify the firmware. It can be quite a daunting process if that's not something you've done before or something you're not used to. So in this video, I'm gonna show you all the software and stuff, all the configuration you need to get started with modifying the Marlin firmware. The first thing you need to do is identify whether you have an 8-bit or 32-bit board. If you have an 8-bit board, which is one of the kind of older style, if you like, then Marlin version one process using the Arduino IDE is the same process as it is now. So if you have an 8-bit board, you can go and find all the videos on how to do that. The process is exactly the same. However, if you have a 32-bit board, which is a much newer type of boards, then this is the video you want. We're gonna go through getting started with having Marlin version two for 32-bit boards. Next, we're going to download Marlin firmware. You can either Google it or just use the link below. The firmware files here that we're downloading is basically the data, all the files that make up the firmware, but in a human readable format. Once you've downloaded it, move and extract them to a location of your choice. Next, we're going to download Microsoft VS Code. Again, you can either Google it, it's probably the first link, or you can use the link in the description below. VS Code is the editor we're going to use to modify the files for the Marlin firmware that we've just downloaded, and also the same tool that we're going to use to convert those files from the human readable format, which we have at the moment, into the machine or code readable format, if you like. Something for the 3D printer. Once you've downloaded it, install it as you would any other program. I ticked these two boxes as well, which give you a little bit extra functionality. Once you get to the end of the install, tick the box to launch VS Code straight away. Next, you need to install Platform IO. This basically gives some additional functionality to Microsoft VS Code in order to do what we need it to do. To do this, you can either go File, Preferences, Extensions, search for Platform IO, and then Install, or you can go to the sidebar where it has Extensions, and then again, Platform IO and Install, or you can also get to the extensions by using the shortcut Control, Shift, and X. Once Platform.io is installed, we need to open the Marlin firmware in Microsoft VS Code so we can work on it. To do that, select the Open Project button, browse to your working location, which you selected earlier, look for the platform.io.ini file, which you may not see the .ini, depending on which extensions you have shown, click Open, and then on the side Explorer tab, it now has your Marlin firmware files, which you've just browsed to. Now that you have all the software running and your firmware loaded up, you can start making modifications. The one thing that we're going to do before making any detailed configuration changes is to make sure we have the correct board set up. To do this, use Control shift e to go to the Explorer tab, select platformio.ini file, and we want to change the default underscore ENVS value. The default is Mega2560, which is the standard for the ramps board, but unless you're doing ramps, which you would probably do in 8-bit and Arduino anyway, we're going to be changing this to the board that you use it. So this is the value you can either get from your reseller, from the manufacturer, or you can just do what I'm gonna do here, which is use Control F and search for a part of the model number of the actual board that you have, and then you can use that value up the top. So I'm going to Control F for GTR underscore, and that will find me the Brig Tree Tech GTR version 1.0. It's worth just checking the model number of the chip, which is just here, and compare it to the chip on the physical board. They should be the same number and that means you've got the right board for the right chip, which is, you know, useful. Once you've got that, you can copy the ENVS value and paste it over where it says Mega2560 at the top of the page. As always, Control S will save your changes. So that is all you need to get started with the basics. It really is very simple. You're now ready to start working on the configuration.h and configuration underscore advanced or advh files, which is your basic configuration and advanced configuration respectively. In the next couple of videos, we're going to look at first how to configure the firmware. So going through all the settings, what they mean. We probably won't go through every single one in detail, but we'll give you enough information to make sure you can create firmware for your specific printer be it totally from scratch or from one that already exists and maybe you're just upgrading or modifying. 
and then we'll look at how to upload that firmware, so taking it from your computer and shoving it into the printer, which is obviously the end goal, otherwise it's not going to do very much. So hopefully that was helpful, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.